When creating a game, we usually deal with the performance issues when they start appearing in our prototypes. Our shooting game mechanic creates new bullets on every shot. We currently disable those bullets in our scene, but they still reside in our memory and clutter it. Now, we can of course delete the previously existing bullet, but this could cause an issue called the curse of fragmentation, where we have a smallest piece of memory at our disposal, where we put our memory of our objects. And we put a bullet here, then we put something else into this piece of memory, then we delete our bullet and put something even smaller into it, and then we are left with two pieces of memory that cannot really fit a new bullet in there. So we are basically wasting those pieces of memory and we need to get another big piece of memory and put there a new bullet that we instantiate. So instead of doing this, we can use what is called object pooling design pattern, which we will implement into our tank game in this video. This video is part of the series of videos about creating a 2D top-down tank game. We will explore different features of this game, each as a standalone video. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. In the previous video of this series, we have tackled the issue of layers and how we can detect the collision between specific layers so that our tank, for example, cannot pass through this obstacle, but can still shoot above it. Now, in this video, we would like to tackle the issue of creating those bullet prefabs. And we have disabled those instead of deleting them. But right now, as you can see, the more we shoot, the more bullets are created. Since our shooting is pretty slow, they get destroyed before we can shoot another bullet. And now if we go to our player tank and swap the delay for our turret, so for example from 1 to be 0.1, we will be shooting much more quickly. And there those bullets will be created much more rapidly. And we can see that we can have multiple bullets on the screen at the same time, but at some point some of those bullets will be destroyed. So why not? just to take the last bullet that was destroyed and find it in our scene. Let's enable it and let's move it back into our turret and let's shoot it instead of creating a new one. So basically, let's reuse the previously created bullets. So to implement this reusability of our bullets, we are going to use the object pooling design pattern. For our object pool design pattern, we have the intent to improve performance and memory use by reusing objects from a fixed pool instead of allocating and freeing them individually. So basically, we want to create a pool of objects and we want to keep reusing them instead of creating a new one each time we want to reuse a, ob an object of this type. Now, for our game, the idea is to use the object pool for shooting mechanic, but if we create it generic enough, we can reuse it for other things like spawning effects when we have our tank uh, bullet hit an obstacle and so on. So what we want to do is simply create a new script in our scripts folder and let's call it object pool. Let's open this script up in Visual Studio. Okay, this will be a mono behavior and we want to delete the start and update methods. And first of all, I will paste here a couple of fields that we are going to use. So, first one is the object to pull. And this will be the game object that we want to respawn using our object pool. So, we are going to reuse basically this object. Next, we want to have a pool size, which will be the size of our object pool. So, how many objects are created new before we start reusing them. Now to create our object pool, we are going to use the queue data structure, which is simply first in, first out. So first object that gets into the queue, so first disabled bullet, will get reused first. So if we have 10 bullets, we are going to first create 10 bullets and place them in our queue, and we are going to then reuse the first shot bullet, so the oldest one, to be reused as our new bullet. And at the end, we will need to have a transform, which will be called spawned objects parent. So as you previously have seen, we are uh, spawning all the bullets in our hierarchy. Instead, I would like to have a separate game object that will hold all the bullets. It will be much easier for us to take a look at the hierarchy without all those bullets cluttering it. Now, let's explore the methods for this class. 
And here they are. First, we are going to call on awake. We are going to create a new queue of type game object. So our basically object pool. Next, we will have a method called initialize. So for example, we have a game object that we want to use for our object pool. And we want to have a this specific pool size. So instead of using the default settings, since those are serialized fields, we can set them through the inspector, we can invoke the initialize method from our game object that wants to spawn a new object using the object pool, and we can set the object to pool game object, and we can set the pool size. Next, we have a method that will actually create our object, and we, I have called it create object, and our create object will return a game object. So first method that is called here is create object parent if needed. Now this method will simply create a spawned object parent, which is the transform that keeps our objects we are going to spawn so that they do not clutter the hierarchy. Now, if this is equal to null, we are going to create this object by giving it a name of object pool underscore the object to pool name, so the object that we want to spawn. Next, we are going to check if, by any chance, any other object pool has already created this object. So, for example, our enemies can also use the object pool for their bullets, and we would then have our object pool underscore bullets in our hierarchy, so we can reuse it. If we can find it, we are going to simply set it to be this object transform. Now, if we can't find this game object with this name, we are going to simply spawn a new game object in our hierarchy, and that's basically it. Now this is just for us to have easier times looking at the hierarchy. The core logic of creating objects is in the create object method. First of all, we are going to create an empty game object called spawned object. Now if our object pool, which is our queue, if its count is less than pool size, so the maximum number of objects that we want to create, we are going to simply instantiate a new object, giving it a position of this object pool and the quaternion identity rotation. We are going to give it a specific name of the uh, root name, and we are going to add to it an object to pool name and the object pool count, so we know which object it is. And at the end, we are going to set its parent to be spawned object parent. Now, if we have all the objects that we can instantiate, we are going to start reusing the old objects. And to reuse the oldest object, we are going to call on our object pool queue, method called dq, which takes the object that is oldest from our queue, and we are going to simply reset its position and rotation, and set it to be active since we are disabling all the bullets after they end their life, or if they hit an enemy or any collider. And simply we are going to and queue them, so we are going to put them into our queue again as the fresh object, so at the end of the queue, so this object will be reused only after all the previously created objects were reused. So the basic idea is to create only the pool size of objects, so for example only 10 objects, and if we already have created 10 objects, we are going to reuse the oldest objects as a new bullet for our shooting mechanic. Great! So now, how do we use this object pool? Let's go back to Unity. Okay. Now, our tank is a prefab, so I will enter the prefab. And I know that the tank turret has the third script, which is responsible for spawning the bullet prefab and actually shooting the bullet from our turret. So I will add here our object pool component. And it has object to pool game object field and the pool size and it has spawned object parent if you want to set it manually. Now, I will want to invoke every function for this object pool from our turret script, so I will simply save this prefab, and I will open our turret by clicking those three dots and edit the script. Okay, and what I can do to ensure that our turret, uh, if we have a new turret, reuses the object pool, I'm going to add an attribute above the class name, require component, and I'm going to open parenthesis, type of, open the parenthesis, and type of object pool. And this will ensure that if we place a turret script onto a new game object, the object pool will be always added to it. 
but this will not work on the previously created turret game objects. So if you have already placed a turret on some object and you add this required component, it will not run on this object, it will only run on the game objects which do not have this turret component that we add this turret component onto. Now, we need to have a reference to our object pool, so let's create public or rather private object pool and let's call it bullet pool. And we can create a serialized field of type private int maybe bullet pool count. Let's set it to be equal to 10. So we can set the bullet pool count from our turret script. We do not need to change it through the object pool. Now we need to get the reference to our bullet pool. So let's in the awake call our bullet pool equals get component of type object pool. And this will allow us to get the reference to it. Now we need to initialize our object pool, so we're going to call start and we are going to call bullet pool dot initialize. And this has this takes our object to pool, which is our bullet prefab, and this takes our bullet pool count. So let's pass it bullet pool count. Now last thing is to actually call this bullet pool to get us a game object. So all we need to do is find our shoot method and instead of calling game object bullet equals instantiate bullet we can comment it out we can copy this statement and instead of calling instantiate we are going to call bullet pool dot create object and this will give us a new object or a uh, object that is already existing to be reused let's save it let's go back to unity okay now we can see that our turret script object has the bullet pool count. Let me decrease it to 2 so we can easily see how our bullet pool is working. We are not going to set anything for the object pool script. Let's save the, the inspector and I'm going to press play. And let's see if we are shooting the bullet. Our object pool underscore bullets was created and bullet 0 was created. Let's shoot another one. Here is bullet 1, so those are 2. Let's shoot another one and we can see that bullet 0 was reused. And next, the bullet 1 will be reused, and they will be reused interchangeably. And if we have more bullets, the first one will be reused, but then the second one, and then the latter ones, until we reach again the beginning of our queue. But currently we have one issue with our setup. Let me quickly create a new script. It will be called destroyUtil. And let me show you what it does. Okay. This destroyUtil will allow us to call destroy game object on any object that contains this script. And it will be a helper script because we cannot really use the game object default settings to destroy a game object. Let me show you what I mean. So currently our tank enemy, when its health drops below zero and it calls on that event, it calls game object set active to false, but we cannot really destroy our game object. So we will need to have this destroy util on this tank and if we call this destroy util in uh, case of this event, we can call our destroy util destroy helper and it will destroy our tank, our enemy tank. Now, I will add here another player input script that we have implemented in the previous video that simply allows our player to control the tank as well. And we are going to simply control the shooting of our tank since we do not have currently the AI to invoke our shooting mechanic. So what we can do is drag our tank controller and we are going to invoke on shoot and we are going to call tank controller handle shoot. So this is just for the purpose of the demonstration that if we now press play and if we shoot, our tank enemy will also shoot and our object pool will be filled with tank bullets. So our enemy bullets as well as of our player bullets. Now, if we shoot again, those bullets will be reused. Now for our tank, it has, I think 10 bullets. So it will be 10 bullets spawned. Now, if I destroy this tank, you will see that the tank object was destroyed indeed, but the tank bullets are still here, but they will never be reused by anybody else than the tank enemy that was previously destroyed. So, those will clutter our memory now instead of those bullets that we had previously. This is no good. So let's mitigate this by destroying those bullets in case our tank enemy or our player are destroyed. So let me stop the game. And for this, we will need to have another script. Let's create a new script and let's call it destroy if disabled. Okay, let's open the script in Visual Studio. Great. 
Here we will have a public property of type boolean and it will be called self-destruction enabled. By default it will be set to be false. Now on disable is a mono behavior method that is called when we disable our object, so we set active to false. Now if our self-destruction enabled will be set to true, we will instead of disabling this object want to destroy it. So this is in case our bullet was shot but the enemy was in the meantime destroyed so the bullet is still flying and it will be by default disabled but if the tank is non-existent instead of disabling the bullet we will destroy it immediately. Now this poses an issue because the destroy if disabled will need to be added on every prefab that we use for our object pool. So instead of adding it manually I'm going to go to our object pool script and I'm going to go to our create object. And when we create our object in our first if statement when we create new objects, we are going to call spawn object dot add component and we are going to add destroy if disabled component. And all we need to do is slide down and create on destroy method, which is another method from the mono behavior, which is called just before we destroy our object. Now here all we need to do is call for each and we are going to loop for each object in our queue, which is called object pool. Now, if our item is equal to null, we are going to simply continue. If our item is disabled, so active self is false, we are going to destroy the disabled bullets in our case. And if object is still enabled, we are going to set its destroy if disabled self-destruction enabled parameter to be true so it will be destroyed when we disable it by default logic. Now if we save it, if we go back to our project, we can press play and now we should be able to see that if we shoot a couple of bullets here and we have our object pool for our tank and the player, if we shoot our tank enemy, our tank bullets, so the prefabs for our tank, were destroyed as well as our tank and this freeze our memory and unclutters our hierarchy and this is how we should use our object pool. Okay great, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want to support me, please take a look at my Patreon website, check out my Udemy course about creating a 2D top-down shooter using the URP and UNT 2020. There will be a link with a discount in the description if you are interested. Leave a like, subscribe and in the next video we are going to explore scriptable objects, so the way to move for example our settings for our tank turret, which are the bullet prefab, the reload delay, the bullet pull count, from the script itself into a scriptable object, so that we can reuse this turret and create multiple turrets of different parameters, spawning different bullets using scriptable objects instead of changing those parameters in our turret script. In any case, I hope you have enjoyed this video, take care!